Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Well, Christmas is here and that's a time when radio stations and people in general tend to play Christmas songs. Some of them we like and some of them we really don't. Now, I'm not able to play any of these to you because of copyright restrictions, but I'm going to give you a little list of songs. Some of them I like, and some of them I really don't. So the first one is Wizard. I wish it could be Christmas every day. It's from the 1970s, and it's one of these innocent party songs which sounds good. It uses a musical technique called the wall of sound. The wall of sound is something which was invented by Phil Spector in the 1960s. It means that as well as having a bit of music, there's no silence. The track is completely covered by a background noise. It was very popular in the 60s and early 70s. Another one is The Ronettes with Frosty the Snowman. I like that one too. It's very good and if you get the chance to listen to it, you certainly really should. Now there is a collective conscience here which absolutely dislikes Mariah Carey. And I'm part of that. Um, She had a very famous song about Christmas, and it seems that many people don't like it. All I Want for Christmas is You was the name of it. And there's a viral YouTube clip going around at the moment of someone destroying that song on social media. I think they were reversing their car over the CD. There's other songs which people don't like. One of them is Wham! and Last Christmas. And many people here particularly dislike that song. It's resulted in a movement called Whamageddon. Now, you may have heard the word Armageddon. That's an ancient biblical prophecy about when the world ends. Whamageddon is the same idea. It's to try to remove this song from Christmas. And many, many people do this competition at Christmas time. So let me explain to you how Whamageddon works. Well, as I was saying a moment ago, Whamageddon comes from the word Armageddon. So they've simply put Wham in place of the first syllable. Whamageddon is a Christmas tradition that involves participating in a challenge to avoid hearing Wham's 1984 hit song, Last Christmas. I actually thought Last Christmas was sang by George Michael as a solo song, but it wasn't. It was while he was part of the group Wham. So the idea is that people who participate in Whamageddon They don't want to hear that song between December the 1st and Christmas Eve. The goal is to remain undefeated throughout the 24-day period, meaning that you haven't been exposed to the song in any form. That includes radio broadcasts, TV commercials, public performances, or even personal playlists. Now, last week or the week before, at one of the um, football stadiums, there was a DJ 
who played this song. And he thought it would be funny because he knew some people didn't like hearing that song at Christmas. But what he didn't know was that by playing it, he automatically disqualified 700 players from this game, Huamageddon. And they were very angry with him, and they went to his Twitter account to bitterly complain. Twitter, by the way, is now known as X. How strange is that? Anyway, this game of Huamageddon originated here in the UK, but now is very popular around the world because that's one of the most recognized and disturbing Christmas songs which you're ever likely to hear. There's even dedicated social media groups and websites where participants can track their progress, share strategies, and commiserate with fellow Whamageddon enthusiasts. Here are some of the official rules of Whamageddon. Well, the challenge begins on December 1st, as I told you already. Players must avoid hearing Last Christmas in any form, and if the player hears the song, they are immediately eliminated. Players can create their own sub-rules, such as banning the song from their homes or vehicles. And players share their progress on social media using the hashtag Whamageddon. They say it's a fun and light-hearted way to add excitement to Christmas, but it's also a little bit dark and disturbing. <laughs> it also challenges and tests your patience, your awareness, and your ability to avoid the song. If you're a fan of Wham or simply looking for a different way to celebrate Christmas, then Whamageddon is definitely worth trying. But you have to be prepared to face the consequences if you don't succeed. Because, first of all, you'll be hearing the song and you might not want to do that anyway. It looks like this competition is actually pitched towards Wham fans, but I would guess that most of the people who are doing this are a little bit like me. They really are very bitter and cynical about Christmas music, and that song is very cheesy. Cheesy just means over-sentimental. I think I may have mentioned that in my cheese podcast of the other day. It's not just this song that nobody likes. There's many other Christmas songs which really do strike fear into the heart of people who hear them. One of the ones that I really dislike is East 17. And they sing a song called uh, Stay Another Day. And basically it's three teenagers who are singing badly about splitting up from their, well, presumably girlfriends, I don't know. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's a very annoying Christmas song. That's certainly one to avoid. For those of you who listen to this podcast regularly, you'll know that there's really only two things that I hate in this world, and Celine Dion is both of those things. So she won't be getting played anyway. I do like the Carpenter's Christmas album, and I also like some other people who uh, basically produce Christmas albums, especially the older ones like Andy Williams or Perry Como. Dean Martin, he used to do YouTube specials. Well, he died before YouTube was invented, but his Christmas TV specials are all on YouTube. So that's worth looking at. Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton, together they did a Christmas album as well. And there's a, 
a video on YouTube of both of them, um, which you can find uh, free. That'll pass an hour. Everyone has a Christmas special on YouTube. There's Garfield, the cartoon cat, Charlie Brown's Christmas, which I think is called A Peanuts Christmas, is also very good. Then there's the Muppets. They've done quite a few Christmas specials over the years. I like the Muppets, so I'll be watching the Muppets Wizard of Oz later today. I like that one because it has Ashante, you know, that uh, singer from America. I don't think she's very famous anymore. She only has the one name, Ashante. And I think she was in a relationship with the rapper called Nelly. Um, I don't know if she still is. Oh, yes, it says here in December 2023, it was reported the couple were expecting their first child together. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. Um, I think that movie might be quite old now because I don't think she was very old. Yeah, she was born in 1980. Well, anyway, the Muppets are very good. And if you have access to um, to watch them, they're on one of the TV networks. I don't know which one. One of the on-demand ones. I think it might be Disney or uh, Paramount. But yeah, the Muppets, they always do wonderful Christmas TV specials. Um, and I'll also be watching their version of Pigs in Space. Showing my age there, but the Muppets certainly will get me through Christmas. So if you're looking for some Christmas specials, the Muppets are there as well. Um, and other names for TV video clips you can find on YouTube. Again, The Carpenters, Dean Martin, um, Andy Williams, Perry Como, Tony Bennett, um, Don, The Donnie and Marie Show, uh, Tony Orlando. They all did fabulous uh, Christmas specials. They're kind of more innocent than what we see today. And those continued right up until the 1990s when these older... Um, these older uh, actors started to disappear. But for me, definitely the most famous one that I like is Wizards with I Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day. If you are choosing to do Whamageddon, you're not too late. You could start it now if you hate Christmas as much as many British people do. And uh, good luck with that if you are beginning. And that's it from me. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Just to leave you with um, uh, a few little adjectives to describe this season, frantic is definitely one of them, which talks about how stressful and really uh, frightening Christmas can be for a lot of people. Um, you might think that it's uh, a very nice, easy, straightforward time. But for many people, especially those with strong social or family connections, it isn't always like that. So frantic is one. Overwhelming is another. So do spare a thought for your friends and family uh, if you are in touch with them. If you're outside of Europe, this might be something like Chinese New Year, but without the happiness and more forced. Or maybe like in the Islamic world, there's Eid. If you can imagine Eid, but without the joy, <laughs> something like that, you know. And uh, of course, a lot of alcohol is consumed at Christmas and there'll be a lot of fights and bad relationships too. So that's why a lot of people, I think, prefer not to celebrate it. I think people just generally feel bullied and manipulated by the media because it's a time when we are told you will be happy, you will buy gifts, you will spend money, you will eat. So I think a lot of people really resent that. And when that comes upon us, it's quite frightening. As a community, it's nice. But for people who live very solitary, lonely lives, um, it really isn't 
a very nice time. And there we are. Okay, see you. Bye.